How does a stock Nexus 4 compare to one that's overclocked? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a before and after with an overclocked Nexus 4. We, the nerdy minority, often take pride in having the latest, greatest, and fastest devices, but we make an exception for virtually anything bearing the Nexus brand. And the Nexus 4 is a perfect example of that. At the time of its release, it did actually include what many consider the best chipset of 2012, the Snapdragon S4 Pro. Four CPU cores and a clock speed of 1.5 GHz, it's still nothing to scoff at. But in light of newer devices with faster clock speeds and newer chips, the Nexus 4's age is beginning to show, if only slightly. As any Android enthusiast will tell you, there are a few ways to breathe new life into a device, to instill newness, even on aging hardware. New ROMs, themes, software updates, and, of course, custom kernels. For my Nexus 4, I chose the Mako kernel, which comes in various forms. It comes with either stock CPU frequencies, called the mainline version, and in Turbo Boost versions, with maximum clock speeds up to 1.836 GHz and 1.944 GHz. Of course, it wouldn't be interesting if I didn't choose the highest clock speed, so I picked the 1.944 GHz Turbo Boost Mako kernel and flashed it. To flash the kernel, simply download the zip file to your device. The XDA thread is linked in the description below, and boot into recovery. Select Install Zip from SD Card, choose Zip from SD Card, navigate to the file you downloaded, confirm, and flash. Wipe the cache partition and the Dalvik cache and reboot. This reboot will take longer than normal, but once the reboot finishes, you're good to go. The Nexus 4 certainly was not sluggish before overclocking, but it's definitely a little faster after the fact. To the naked eye and view separately, it's difficult, if not impossible, to tell a difference in performance from before and after. Flipping between tabs in Chrome, opening and closing applications, and perusing Google Plus all happens in the blink of an eye. Even switching between applications happens quickly and smoothly, with few instances of lag or hesitation. The most notable difference in actual usage is how easily the overclocked Nexus 4 powered through Facebook, while the stock Nexus 4 stuttered and suffered from slow wait times when quickly scrolling to the bottom of the newsfeed, the overclocked Nexus 4 loaded older posts much quicker. The overclocked Nexus just felt snappier in most scenarios, ever so slightly. Pinch zooming felt a tad smoother, app switching and loading seemed faster, and upon returning home, the home screen was redrawn more quickly. Maybe it's a bit of a placebo effect in other areas, or maybe it's actually a bit faster. The two were even very close in synthetic benchmarks. The stock Nexus 4 actually scored higher in Antutu than the Nexus with the overclocked kernel. In other Antutu tests, it also scored significantly lower while the overclocked Nexus 4 consistently scored in the 16,000s. Running at 1.944 GHz, the overclocked Nexus 4 also scored higher in Geekbench 2 than the stock version, and it shaved some time off the SunSpider JavaScript test, breaking into the 1200 millisecond range versus the stock's consistent 1500 millisecond average. Best of all, unlike our HTC One before and after video, the Nexus didn't seem to run abnormally warm, but it did tend to tear through battery life faster than before. Through the same amount of stress, the battery drained at about 1.5 times faster than the stock kernel and clock speeds. That's all for now. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, be sure to click the like button and subscribe. Follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at PocketNow. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you next time. Do you want to know how a Nexus 4? <clears throat> Do you want to know how a stock Nexus 4 stacks up against an overclock stock? Overclock stock. Do you want to know how a stock Nexus 4? <clears throat> Do you want to know how a stock Nexus 4 compares to one that's overclocked? Of course you do. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a before and after of an overclocked. Do you want to know? Uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it.